Are things cracking? Are the shortages starting to come again? Stick with me and I'm going to take you through what's going on in the news and if you're a homesteader, what you should be buying right now because there's some things that are really well priced for a little bit longer and you want to grab them before all this hits. I forgot to mention I have my partner Lorelai. She does not like being on camera. You will not see her on camera, but you will hear her voice chatting with me throughout this. So. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Looptopia. We are building our own utopian homestead. And I'm going to take you around the bend a little bit because we've always on this channel has been kind of watching the food crisis and a few times they've come through where, you know, we've, we've been ahead of it by a few days and we catch things right on time. But I want you guys to just stay vigilant over the next thing because I'm not trying to pump fear or, or fear bait or whatever, but this is important because there is a perfect storm brewing and all these things are coming down at the same time. So we went into our Walmart and then our food line and there were already empty shelves. Now I've seen this over the last few months where a section's empty here or a section's empty there, but I'm seeing it more and more and more and more sections are starting to do it. So they're kind of keeping, you know, everything open looking and juggling. But it's the same thing last time where the pasta got hit first. You know, you're starting to see that and like the dry goods, the rice and stuff. Uh, those things are starting to disappear again on these shelves. And that's kind of, you know, a big flag to me because they've been talking about like for two years, uh, there's been a corn shortage because there was a lot of bad crops uh, year after year. And then um, they just had a really hard time keeping corn going. And rice is starting to get harder to come in because most of that's imported and it's stuck on a ship somewhere. Uh, or if it's coming at all. And then, you know, the, the, the staples, the, same, the things we watched disappear last time. And they were gone. Like I remember last time a year ago, the rice was gone in a matter of 24 hours. It was just gone. And the pasta, and the pasta already is being picked over. But right now we have kind of a rare opportunity. Right after Christmas, they do another grab at sales to try to get you to spend more money. The markets are showing that Black Friday, people didn't spend as much as they were hoping. So they'll probably try to do some deep discounts to get you to spend again. What's crazy though is that you'll probably never see things at this price again this is it so buy now and buy hard because in the beginning of the year a bunch of things come together in january that are going to cause a lot of problems and i think inflation's really going to start to go up and you'll start to see this pretty much things coming in from china especially electronics and as a homesteader you're looking at like solar power and you know little solar generators and solar uh, panels and, and electronics at that end, you'll notice already the jump. Like I watched uh, Blue Eddy jump. I went to buy a, uh, a little home unit and it jumped like $300 in a day. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, watching the prices jump because it's just getting hard to get this stuff. And what will happen next year is you'll order something and you'll wait and it'll be four months out and five months out. And then it just won't be available to send you a note saying, sorry. And I've already seen this happen on Walmart a few times, but we ordered uh, an electronic bike and they shipped the bike and it's been over a month and a half and they haven't shipped the battery for the bike. And they're like, well, it'll get here when I get here. Sorry, shipping delays. We ordered a sun oven and um, yeah, haven't even heard anything. I got an email and they're like, yeah, sorry, shipping delays. You know, it's been months. I've been waiting on these things. So things like that are just going to be, you're lucky if you can get them. But what's happening right now is everything is being discounted as one last push. By January, though, I think everything's going to go way up. And you're going to kick yourself in the butt for not buying these things because they're going to be a good 25% more, if not more. The other thing is in January, there's a lot happening. There is um, some stuff going down with trucking. So one of these things in Colorado, there was a terrible accident where a trucker accidentally killed some people because his brakes failed and he got like over a hundred years in jail sentence. 
And so millions of truckers are signing a petition and they are boycotting over the sentence of this guy. So, you know, Colorado, uh, there's a lot of trucking that goes through to Colorado. And they say they haven't really seen a big change in that yet, but more and more people signing on to this thing and it's really becoming like a political issue and taking root. If, you know, all it takes is like five to 10% of truckers to not do their job and things scream to a halt. People don't realize how fragile that industry is. And then the other big one is the Canadian US border. Um, you know, because of mandates, there's a bunch of truckers that are refusing and they're just, they're just like not gonna be able to truck out of Canada anymore because a bunch of people are walking away because of the mandates. And they, that starts um, the mid January too. Then you have the national mandates where, you know, anybody, any company over a hundred people can't, um, everybody, you know what I'm trying to say? Anyone over hundred people, I can't say it on YouTube, but what will happen is um, th that is in Supreme Court right now. And if they don't get the ruling the right way, there are going to be massive amounts of people that walk out of their jobs that are truckers. And that'll easily be enough to put it over the 5 to 10%. All those things happen in January. And then let's add to that last month, you know, the giant tornado that went through the Midwest. It destroyed a bunch of grain silos. Like 6 million tons of grain was just lost. And a bunch of chickens were killed, the, ch the chicken refineries and animal refineries. Oh, what is it? Oh, oh, the big one. Okay, so this major producer of John Deere. Um, they like sell a, a bunch big, of... A big dealership, I think Big John Deere dealership they, got they completely leveled. Too, so. And this is another thing that we don't realize that, you know, stuff like John Deere, if you go buy that equipment now, tractors are completely... Um, have computers everywhere in them now. They're just like modern cars. So they are having a hard time getting chips. You will notice that farming equipment's getting hard and when things break, those things aren't getting repaired. And you're seeing that in trucking too. I talked to some truckers and they were just like, yeah, our truck's been in the shop for three weeks because we couldn't get this simple part. You know, uh, it's stuck on a boat somewhere. And so you're gonna see a byproduct of, it. it's gonna be like a negative feedback loop where stuff's not coming in to be shipped and the trucks can't get fixed because they need the stuff, but they can't bring the stuff. <laughs> and it's just like a negative feedback loop building. So there's all these like signs everywhere saying, if you're paying any sort of attention, January's things are gonna turn. So I'm really encouraging you, if you're kind of sitting on the wind and you're like, man, eh, we blew a lot of money at Christmas. Yeah, I get that. But the stuff's not gonna be any cheaper by January. So take advantage over the next week, get those supplies you've been Wait to pull the trigger. Go ahead and buy that expensive battery bag. Buy that whatever you need. Just do it and get it done. And um, I think you'll you'll really kick yourself later if you don't. Do you have anything else to add with that? No, I think that's about it. Okay. So that's really I just want to catch you guys up and, and encourage you guys to uh, stock up. And I know people will watch this channel and be like, well, you know, you're part of the problem. You're encouraging people to panic buy or whatever and it's like no all these all these things are i mean you gotta be blind not to be paying attention and we've been stocking up on the all things year. that we found just because the first time i ordered pants that i wanted and had to wait six weeks for them yeah you know like and I two think day shipping doesn't really exist sometimes now it, it's getting worse and worse i'm actually getting i'll order stuff where they're like yeah it's in stock and then i'll get something being like mm, sorry mm -hmm. we were wrong about that yep you i've know. had numerous emails back for and gifts this year that was like, yeah, I've never, no. I've never even seen that. Like, I, I've heard of that, but I've ordered many things and never gotten those emails. And I think I've got three last month, three or four, where they're just like, nah, your order's done. Sorry. Tough luck. And we're out of stock and we don't know. We can email you if you want, maybe. Yeah. You know, like we can that. put you on the wait list. The, the purgatory wait list. Yeah. Like going to purgatory. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys want to add your two cents into this, too. I just think a lot of things are culminating in January and... Uh, oh, the, and inflation, too. Oh, like, yeah, you let's know. talk about that, right? Say we're completely wrong and you can get whatever you want. You're still going to buy everything cheaper now. It's like buying everything on sale because just the fact that inflation is going to rise. Um, yeah, this is the end of the Dollar Tree. 
and oh. I've always said that was the that's the, the, that's the big telltale sign when the Dollar Tree is no longer a dollar, and by the end of the quarter they will all be a dollar twenty-five. Yeah, so if you missed that, Dollar Tree's going to a um, dollar twenty-five at the end of the quarter, which is, sh I mean, they haven't raised their prices in thirty years to be true, but if you have been shopping there, they are raising them. It's just doing the shrinkflation where you're getting less and less. Like what I could get at the Dollar Tree ten years ago isn't anything close to what I can get now. No, not even close. But still, but it's a good measurement of when they where the dollar have to is. raise the price. Yeah, and that's if your Dollar Tree's even open. Apparently, they're just kind of like closing randomly because nobody wants to work there now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. Did you guys see this? Dollar Trees are completely quitting because their their employees they just can't hire anyone. And oh gosh, let's add that to the mix, right? So not only is I'm worried about the trucking and, and stuff not coming in and getting stuck at ports, um, people don't want to work anymore. So they got a taste of what it's like to be at home and enjoy life. And they're like, you know, working for the man nine to five sucks. I don't want to do this with my life. Or to be screamed at for and, eight hours by people that are grumpy because you don't have enough help at your store. Yeah, especially for minimum wage. You know, yeah. Customer service jobs, man, they're in big trouble because people don't want to go back to the crappy jobs. And the only reason people take the customer service jobs is because they can't get a better job. But if they want a better job, they're available right now. You know, um, so the customer service jobs, I, I think what's going to happen is a bunch of those are probably going to struggle and go out of business and reduce their hours. And then some are just going to go robotic because they've been talking about that for a while. And you're already seeing that in some like I think it's like Sheets gas station that has like robots that make stuff in the back like it's like a robotic thing and some of the the fancier ones and you know McDonald's has been talking about that and Walmart for years has been talking about having robots come through and scan inventory and then have robots come and stop the shelves and I think that is probably what we'll end up going to is because uh People don't want to work anymore, and they well, a lot of it is people are don't willing to deal. sacrifice their lifestyle for that. People don't want to deal with people either. Like, yeah. People have gotten mean. Well, I blame so, this. So, like, I don't shop anymore. You know, I order everything. Yeah, I, I blame this also <laughs> on the internet in a way that um, Generation Z that has come up, um, the more you time you spend on the internet and less time face-to-face, -face, the more you become an introvert, and that's your norm. So we've raised an entire generation of introverts that that is the norm, where it used to be like the exception if you were an introvert. Now you're the exception if you're the extrovert. And um, people in public service need to be extroverts. Like, you know, if you're an introvert, you're going to suck at customer service most likely. You can't sell anything you, if you don't talk to people. Yeah, and <laughs> like talking to people exhaust you and wear you out and annoy you. And, you know, and so we have a whole generation of people that normally would take those jobs, the younger people that are raised that they can't stand people in real life. So it's a big culmination where I think things are going to go robotic because of that. I mean, why the hell would you have employees if I can just have robots make sandwiches and I never have to deal with time off? I never have to True. deal with employees getting sick. They don't steal. You know, all they do is break down, and so you got one guy there that keeps everything running. Yeah, you I was going to say you can have two or three high-paid employees instead of 50 it just really so badly-paid employees. And I think that's what, I mean, they're already training that. If you noticed in Walmart, they're already training you to um, check out your own groceries. And they're getting to the point where there's only like one register open, and there's a giant wait to get a real person to check you out. Oh, I have it. They've already trained you. I have the thing on my app. I don't even have to check out now. I can just scan it in with my phone what I'm buying and just we just walk out. Oh, didn't know that was even a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. But I don't even go to the store. I just have it <laughs> delivered. Fantastic. It's all for the same subscription. So. so if you guys didn't know that was possible, I didn't know that either. But it's just that culmination of things happening. Then, you know, also people are getting less and less healthy. They're getting sick and they're also not getting the work and that's going to be a major major thing next year and i think all those coming together you're just going to run out of stuff and if you don't pull the trigger now i think you're really really going to regret it i we have shopped more than i think i've ever shopped in my life the last few months but every time we do we have this discussion of god we spent so much money but i don't think this stuff's going to be here next year or we will never see it at this price again and it's one of those things that uh, it's, it's been a real struggle to spend money like that. But think about this. If the dollar is really crumbling and turning to junk, which they're obviously doing. Obviously it is. They're, obviously it's happening, the inflation. But they're doing a juggling act to pretend this isn't happening for, I don't even understand how they pushed it this long, but they have. 
Um, it always amazes me that the dollar hasn't collapsed right, like in it, like the years. last 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't even understand how it's still going, but it is. Um, one thing people are like, you know, run the cryptocurrency or rub the gold and silver, but I really like having things. Um, I think, like, at, at our homestead, our goal is to be completely self-sufficient within two years. By 2024, uh, we, not that we want to be, but if we have to, we can push that trigger and we can never go shopping or leave that homestead again and, and be okay. And that is not an easy place to get to. I understand it's a lot of work, but that is our goal. Um, I think that it's one of those things that it depends on how comfortable of a lifestyle you want. And I want to live comfortable. Fairly comfortable. You know, yeah. we're, we're around in 50 years old. I don't want to be out there freezing to death and, and hot to death. I'd like to be able to have enough solar to run a little tiny air conditioner or something. Or, you know, like just some simple luxuries would be nice because we've just gotten used to and adapt. Now, obviously, we can adapt to that if that's not available, but we have time. And the writing's on the wall. If you prepare, you'll be all right. And I think, I think just... Uh, just pay attention. So take care of you guys. Take care of each other. And uh, remember, if you want to see our uncensored stuff, because I'm not allowed to really talk about anything here that is deeper than what we just did, even then is kind of pushing YouTube standards. Uh, we are over on Odyssey and Brighton. Um, you can get the full thing. Up there. Yeah, you can <laughs> get that. And if you go over there, and you'll see this special story I just did that definitely is not allowed on YouTube about uh, having what the best medical devices for uh, having a homestead is. So if you're gonna homestead, you might be interested in checking that out. Again, this channel is really geared at people that want to homestead and make the transition. Although, I mean, seasoned vets are definitely welcome here, but it's, it's mainly for newer people that are like, oh, I don't have a lot of construction experience or I don't have a lot of this or that. Um, we wanna help you at least become more self-sufficient and we do believe time is running out. At this point, you, you're crazy to stall. Like, I, it, it blows me away that people, um, after what happened last year and they got a little taste, just went back to everything as normal. It's like, no, oh, no, it's fine. You know, yeah. where meanwhile, like, the like, homesteaders are like, okay, oh, this was a big warning. Let's, uh, let's stop yeah, out as like much we as got, we can, you know? got lucky with that warning. Yeah, it's like, kind of like, here's like, a warning. Okay, here you go. Here's your last chance. Here's and... a little taste of what it's like to have a week without gas. And here's a little taste of uh, what it's like to have panic buying. And we got to see that in how it was actually kind of an interesting experiment of what went first. Like, who the hell would have thought toilet paper would go first, you know? Like, I would think rice. <laughs> or, you know. But toilet paper. And, uh, yeah, toilet people were buying toilet paper over food at first. The first few weeks, I was like, this is stupid. Why are you not buying food? Um, I don't know. I, I just think that if you're going to invest in money, you know, sure, there's a place for crypto and gold and stuff, but man, put your put your money in food and, and self-sufficient things. Buy tools. Buy some uh, at batteries. Buy uh, things that make your life better on the homestead. That's uh, our goal I keep coming back to this. I, this is what I was trying to say. Is our goal is to become not only self-sufficient, but also money-proof. And I think that's a weird concept for people. And it's a concept that's a hard check for people in the gut, too. Because when things really break down, your lifestyle is going to change. You're not going to go out to restaurants anymore. You're not going to go over to your friends' houses and hang out. You're not going to go over, um, you know, big holiday things five states away. I can be like, oh, I'm driving to my mom over five states from now. No, none of that stuff's going to happen when you can't get gas and you can't. Or if gas is ten dollars a gallon. Yeah, ten dollars. Like, it costs three thousand dollars to travel up north. You know, like you got to prepare that this is happening because um, heck, there was just an ex big explosion, right? That mm -hmm. knocked out a bunch of gas. An oil refinery just happened yesterday, and uh, who knows how that's going to ripple out? No, I think it was the twenty third. Oh, was it? I yeah. just. It was a few days ago. Um, so it's one of these things that not only is it good to become self-sufficient, but I think you need to keep in mind to become moneyless. And what I mean by that is I have every tool I need out there to survive. I have enough timber and lumber on my, my homestead and enough food growing that if for some reason I never left that homestead again, we could still have a quality life and have everything we need. And it's not going to be a luxurious No, life. but actually, I think we could be pretty happy. But if I think we, we would be pretty comfortable. And we're if we already, had a decent little community, like we fine. don't go out to eat anyway. 
Right. This we've been kind of training ourselves for the last few years. Um, we don't go out to eat anymore, which is crazy for some people. But it's we have a real restrictive diet anyway. So we there's nowhere I can go and eat. So I had to give that up anyway. But for the price of going even out to fast food, it's shocking now. I think the last fast food I went to was Burger King when they did the Impossible. Oh, it was like Buffer. thirty-five dollars. Thirty-five you know, dollars like, for two people, and I was like, "This is Burger King." You know, how are we at thirty-five bucks? Like, it should never be more than twenty dollars for fast food ever. I'm sorry, just. I just it's mind-boggling. Even the cheap like Chinese food you get for five dollars now is now twelve ninety-nine. You know, mm -hmm. like, I just I, it blows me away. And I would rather just spend it on quality groceries and. I can't imagine spending 50 bucks going to a movie anymore. There's no way. When I can sit on my couch and enjoy that same movie. And pause it and go to the bathroom when I want. I eat whatever <laughs> I want, rewind it, we can talk. I, I, so it's a shift in mentality of just not going out anymore. And, um, and training yourself that you're going to be okay with that. And getting your kids used to that. That this might become a reality of, you know, we're going to have this small community we're going to deal with. And if you can't walk over and ride a bike and hang out with these people, that's about it. You know, uh, you're not going to be traveling all over the world. And, and the Internet is so what's going to happen with the Internet is this. As people get sick and people quit jobs, those people run the Internet behind the scenes and make things work so the Internet works right. You're going to get patchier, patchier service to the point where so many people are trying to get on like one little section of bandwidth still working that it'll be unbearable. And I, I think maybe you've had a taste of this. If you have a cell phone and you've ever been to a concert or event where you're like, yeah, this phone's worthless right now. I, I can't even send a text. Um, that is what it'll be like full time. It'll just be, the internet will be there, quote, be there, but it'll be so hard to use. People will just be like, I don't know what to do. Screw it. I've been trying to send a text for three weeks and it hasn't gone through. So you can't really, I don't think anyone's going to pull a big trigger and just cut all this off. It's going to be like a squeeze that happens where stuff just becomes unfunctional and doesn't work right. And there'll be lots of complaining and frustration and people losing their mind and pointing fingers. But this is also a wonderful opportunity to start anew and go back to what's important, like spending time with your family without electronics, you know, uh, growing your own food, getting back in touch with the garden instead of watching 10 hours of TV a day. These sort of things are really, really a great thing if you look at it that way. Because I don't think society will reset unless it's forced to, to reset in a hard way. And um, it's a healthier and it's a more spiritual way to live. And you need to train yourself and practice a little, you know. Go ahead and turn the power off for a, a day and see what happens. You know, how do you survive for a day? Stuff you wouldn't think about. You're like, you know, or um, go camping for a weekend without anything except just camping. Don't bring the electronics, put them in the car, lock them up. Just see how you can do, like what the mental strain is going to do to your teenage child when you take their phone away for three days. You know, like how uh, you got to practice these well, things. Well, I was a weird kid in school. That yeah. was my family. We did once a month. We trained. So Lorelai used to, you grew up, if you don't mind me sharing a little bit. Yeah. You grew up on a, what did you say, is it a compound? Survivalist. A survivalist compound. It was a homestead. But you practiced. Could easily be turned into a compound. You guys practiced fasting where you just didn't have food for a few days. You yep. practiced living without electricity. You practiced. You would turn the power off once a month or we would fast once a month or, and then on top of that, we always, you know, we camped all seasons. So up in the mountains in the winter, so yeah. we knew how to survive that way, you know, but we took also, you know, our parents were decent about it. They gave us training. You know, we took survivalist course and well, things how did, like that. Could you imagine taking your daughter and dropping her in that now, 30 years later with these new generation of kids? Oh, no. Like kids who have never, pretty much their entire teenage life has been online and streaming and everything's at their fingertips to take that away is going to cause them like full panic oh you would think but, like, i mean it's the same reason that you know we take the kids phone every night yeah like she doesn't right. have her own phone she has use of a phone right and i i think it's important to start practicing and training that we have uh, a good friend who they pretty much don't let their kid on electronics at all except very very rare occasions just to 
get used to this is the way it's going to be. And I think when that transition happens, it won't be such a shock. Cause well, that kid's going to have a lot easier time adapting. Much better. Than, like, can you imagine the stress of, you know, a I lot can't. of these kids have I mean, issues now, too. Like, they're on the spectrum, and it's yeah, you change have, is difficult. There, there's very few kids or what I would call a normal kid that doesn't have some sort of health issue anymore. They all have allergies. They all have... I can't tell you. I, I don't even know the last time I met someone that doesn't have a kid on the spectrum. They're like, my kid's a little on the spectrum, right? I've never met a kid that's like, yeah, my kid's not normal, healthy, doesn't take anything, it's great. You know, those it's like a rare unicorn to find anymore. And um, I think I'm not looking forward to those people. Uh, you know, I, I feel bad for them, but they have to start practicing or it's going to be a shock. I don't think they will survive. And it's I not mean, so much a physical intolerance. No, it's just it's a mental. mental. Like, we'll if, just you have a have the, if you don't have the mental state to fast, like if I just get, if we just woke up and you just told me we're not eating for two days, that'd be a struggle for me. Like I would have a hard time adjusting to that mentally. Whereas if you were like, next week, let's do a fast. Yeah, we plan ahead. Then you, you it gives you and, time to get used to it. Now, I mean, if, and then when I was a kid, like my, our parents would spring it on us. They'd just be like, no. Like, Saturday morning, you'd wake up and they'd be like, oh, no, this is a fasting weekend. And, I mean, they'd be like, oh. But it was like, man, now i got to go mow the lawn. You're, it's, it was that kind of, uh, it wasn't like, what do you mean, what do you mean, the panic attack, you know, like. Yeah. That just didn't happen in my family. It was like no big deal. And I remember me and my cousin going to school and be like, what do you mean you guys didn't, you don't practice not having power? Like, our power goes out all the time. So our parents just and spring it on us. All seasons, middle of winter, but I mean, all our houses had wood stoves. We always had, you know, wood cut. Summer sucked, but we just went to the lake. You know, like yeah. we rode our horses down to the lake and went swimming. You find other things to do, but I think I'm trying to say it. We were raised in a different time where we were raised with the, uh, here's a bicycle, don't come home until it's dark. You know, yeah. like the kids today are not raised like that. Like, They're don't opposite. come in this house. They're so. like, you get your kids taken away by government agency if you let them play I mean, I, unattended know, for five of, minutes in your own yard and so know. they don't have any of these skills or confidence yeah or it's nobody's fault i mean i, I mean it's you can rewire society's fault, i mean they can change you gotta start practicing but none of that stuff's gonna matter when the people at, you know cps are too sick to come look at your kid you know then there's no employees or there's left, no funding you know CPS, no, yeah it's the really dollar doesn't matter be, anymore yeah it's really hard to be a nosy Karen when yeah. you're not getting a paycheck for it. And the Karens are going to lose their mind because those rules of order that they depend on are going to crumble quickly and there's not going to be anyone to enforce it. And in a way, for a Liberty guy like us, um, it's a beautiful thing. I would oh, love, yeah, I love watching for it. bureaucracy to just leave me alone and get the hell out of the way. I would I, uh, go ahead and crumble because um, I think there's a lot of freedom to just not having people control your life you know your Can neighbors nice. and, and agencies and that will come i think in the next two years as everything just falls apart and you'll see this the reason i'm quoting this is if you look at um other countries who fell apart they will try to keep bureaucracy going but it comes less less important and uh once the inflation hits where you know they're, you're using stacks of money to buy stuff um those jobs pretty much just go away and nobody respects like if you can't enforce that stuff yeah people are more worried about the basics more like keeping the gas station in town right from being robbed you know that's where your resources go to and when there's a real food crisis the first thing that government does is they lock down on the manufacturers and then they move to the distributors like all of a sudden you'll see the national guard come in and take over walmart and uh they will issue maybe like since the EBT system already exists, it'll be something like that where everybody will just get a card and you will have to be rationed and buy You have it. a certain amount that you're limited to and... That'll be the way it goes and it will be the military that... And brand choice that. is not a real big option. Yeah, like, it'll be it'll basically be the same stuff the soldiers are eating. The, or if you go to a food bank, it'll be those companies. Um, what'll happen is that'll squeeze out and then they'll usually go after people that are... Um, Reselling. Reselling, yeah. The resellers. And as like long all as the people that you just bought kind of, toilet paper and then sold it out of their trunk of their car for five dollars a roll kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see the reseller the people that make themselves public about it. 
um, they'll go after those kind of things. But if you're just growing vegetables, they'll leave you alone pretty much. They got they do not have the manpower to go to door to door, door to door to door. They can in a small place. Like you lived in Louisiana and Katrina and stuff when they were going through and and, and going door to door. But that was like the entire nation's military focused on one little area. Yeah. Well, it wasn't even military. Imagine they brought in paramilitary. Paramilitary, like, you know, but they it was one concentrated flood area. Yeah, one tiny area. This they wasn't do the entire not country. Have the resources to do every country, every county, all the little country towns. They do not, they do not, they do not. And let's do that on top of that. The entire world is having a crisis at the same time because when the U.S. goes, well, and I don't think the rest that, of the world goes. See, everybody's like, oh, well, this happened in Venezuela. Yeah, but, you know, there was also other countries sent in aid. Yeah, There's the no from... aid coming when every country has a problem. Yeah, when the aid stops. Um, and I think the, the big red flags are, I would say, because Lorelai and I have talked about this a lot, I think the big thing that really needs to be a glowing sign is when they can't make the Social Security payment. Yeah. That's when things will change. When they, because they've been threatening it a few times to cut it off and we can't get this deal or we have to print more money. The the debt ceiling. And if that's you, the big one. You know, like, and they, they've known this from the Roman times, like of uh, keeping the masses fed, keep them happy. As long as the EBT money and the food stamps are rolling, there won't be as much crime. There'll be some looting, there'll be some of that, but it won't be like full scale riots. And riots because a lot of people don't plan ahead. And as long as you're not in a major city, you'll be fine. Yeah, Those was, people will... I'm really surprised. Like, I looked up the numbers and it's like most people, like most of the population doesn't have more, doesn't even have a week's worth of food in their house. Mind-boggling to me. And how many people have we talked to like, oh, no, my freezer's full. We're good for months. I'm like, yeah. that's not six <laughs> months they, of food. They that's grossly like... <laughs> estimate. Yeah, they're like, oh, my, my little box freezer, my fridge, man, we're packed. We and have like, like 20 pounds of rice. We're golden for the year. You yeah. know, like... I've got a big bag of rice. We're good. It's like, do you have any idea how much food you really eat if you're not eating out at restaurants and stuff? Because these people eat out at restaurants, yeah. so they think, they don't think, you know, a 20 pound bag of rice will last will them, last them for, for six, six months. months because they, they don't even think about it. But I'm like, okay, imagine you can't go outside anymore. That, you know, that rice is all you have to eat. And this sounds hyperbolic, right? Until you realize that last year we were in South Carolina and the system was hacked. Just let me roll my eyes on that one. Um, and the oil stopped coming in and overnight the gas disappeared and then it went up the east coast and we could not get out of the east coast for like a six week. days yeah like we six were... seven days or something because they just didn't have gas and um and to see that happen last year was a real slap in the face and i know it didn't happen everywhere but it happened here and it was like the 70s gas crisis but extreme because there was no gas there was no rationing yeah, there was we went, just no gas we were able to get enough gas so that we could like travel in town to yeah, grocery was, stores and that was it that was like, about it, it and we had to wait in line for hours yeah and i think imagine that happening on a national scale where all of a sudden tomorrow you wake up and there is no gas because someone hacked the system which they're already saying is going to happen right i don't know if you've been watching the next crisis they're preparing for us this one was the pandemic but the next one will be a hacker event. Yeah, cyber that, attacks. It disrupts the... It's always going to be cyber attacks. Cyber attacks that disrupts the supply chain. And you know when that happened. Oh, you know. Come on. <laughs> right. Read between the lines there. So the... Uh, there's just so many reasons you need to, to, to buy right now and buy hard. And it, it, like we keep going back to it, it amazes me that people well, got a taste last year. And we are, are so frugal, change. it's so hard for us. We're like, we're like, <laughs> no. oh, push the add to cart. Oh, yeah. Look at the total, don't look at the total. Just do it. It's just do <laughs> it. Know? And I know people are like, you, you're going to get in debt. Get in the debt. It's, uh, this economy's going in two years. Like, the yes. country's like, Go what? Ahead. Like 80 trillion dollars in debt. <laughs> you know? What are you worried about? <laughs> when, Inflation hits, and you know, there's some positive sides to inflation. Imagine if you had like a 30 year mortgage and you owed, you know, 200,000 on your, your house. When they start printing massive amounts of money and you're getting like a hundred thousand dollar check in the mail in four years, three or four years, <laughs> uh, you've won that game, man. You know, you've, you've made a slam dunk on your property. Unfortunately, I think it'll crumble before. No, it it'll, so. I don't know if it'll go Zimbabwe where you're. I, I think because of the Honestly, mass Honestly, I'm more worried about them seizing coming. accounts than I am with... Yeah, I think that'll be... There's a lot of warnings about that, too, about leaving your money in the stock markets. 
because they'll freeze everyone when there's a panic. The next big panic, they'll just, I don't know if you guys remember that, they, they just turn off the market where they're like, no more trading holidays. today. You know, You're like, oh, you can't take any more than thirty dollars out of your bank account. You've seen that? You know, like, also, yeah, you might want to stockpile some some cash. But honestly, try to change your mindset of how to live without cash. Can you get enough stuff on your homestead to survive? And I want you to go back in your mind, like eighteen hundreds, when people went out to the forest and went out to these lands that nobody was on, and basically owned an axe you know and were able to cut a life out for themselves and live and yet it was a hard life it was nothing glamorous but the point is is there was a time not that long ago like my grandparents were telling me about living like this my grandpa didn't have electricity he, they built yeah. their own house out of like whatever they could find on the land and um that was very normal and i think we will shift back to that in a sense uh for people that are prepared for the ones that aren't you know, this is an event that's probably going to take a lot of people out. Um, but when we get through it, it'll be a really good golden age, I think, for the next the next round of things to come. Um, you have anything else? Boy, we went off a tangent there. I was, yeah. just, I was getting ready to close it up, and I was like, oh, yeah, go over to Odyssey and check it out. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, wait a sec, we got to talk about this other stuff of... Uh, being prepared so i'm sure you guys have lots of comments about this feel free to uh leave whatever you want to add and uh we'll probably turn around and make another story but anyway happy holidays i'm not trying to rain on the holidays i'm just trying to encourage you to shop while all the holiday bargains are going on and, and uh, save yourself Get those fortune. clearances go to those clearance deals man oh the big ones our favorite is uh if you're looking for fabric big go to lots. big lots big lots tomorrow like right at well basically when you're watching this um Right after Christmas, they'll drop everything to 70 to 90 percent. Same with some of the Dollar Trees. But we got like blackout curtains and yeah. tablecloths, and yeah, they you were can like use that Christmas material themed, for anything. But they were like red and green, but was, they were but fabric. They were solid patterns. Yeah, know? and it was amazing. We were getting them for pennies, and it was uh. No, my favorite were the navy blue blackout curtains. Those yeah, were we got fabulous. Those are great. So uh, yeah, check some of the stores tomorrow, and and, and go buy hard there too. But also, you can just do a lot online. Like if you're not familiar with uh, Woot, Woot is a good company that go to their clearance deals. They they kind of take stuff that's going out on Amazon and drop it even more. Uh, that's a that's a good bargain place, I think, too, if you haven't done that. So we love you guys. Take care of each other. Hang in there and stick with us on Loopotopia. Remember, please go subscribe to our Odyssey page over there, too. And uh, we will be back with many, many stories coming as we take you through every step of building our homestead, good and bad, and show you what worked and what didn't work so you can do the same for your homestead.